Musk. Elon! Elon Musk! Oh no, Elon Musk! Okay, everybody. You all know, anybody who's been watching my show for any significant amount of time knows that I think Elon Musk is like the biggest soy boy on the entire planet, a total dweeb, a total fake fraud loser, a person who is idolized only by the most boring real ricks on the planet, um, a guy who his his crowning achievement is getting up is getting like epic updutes, uh, but except in the form of money. So a bunch of redditors who have way too much money and very little sense basically give him lots of money for his stupid ideas, and then he plays the stock market until he we're in a situation like this. Now, many of you uh, are probably familiar with Elon Musk's many, many, many hijinks over the years, from his hilariously stupid Hyperloop idea, which he managed to get a bunch of politicians on board with, to create or to fail to create the absolutely stupidest transit system you could possibly imagine, uh, and also dangerous, uh, uh, to his uh, his blotting out of the night sky by shooting uh, 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 Starlink, uh, what's it called, the satellites up into the sky. Um, he's been quarreling with various uh, uh, space-related groups from astronomers to other space agencies because he's basically firing a bunch of his satellites up into the sky in low orbit. And when you try to look at the, when you try to photograph the night sky from Earth now, there's a bunch of crappy satellites in your way. And yeah. And uh, uh, so, so, Elon Musk has has been basically he he's not an inventor. He doesn't invent anything. He's what uh, the industry likes to call an ideas guy. And by that I mean he has ideas, usually that he buys from other people and then sort of promotes them as his own ideas. Um, he comes, he says really, really stupid and uh, easily falsifiable claims, um, and then because of the way that claims work on technology, because it's all speculative, there's basically nothing bad can actually happen to him because even though he says like, we're going to perfect driving AI in five years, and he said that like 10 years ago, and now it's been 10 years and he's saying five years from now we will have perfected driving AI, even though he does that, even though lots of people give him money to perfect driving, it doesn't matter. So. Basically, what I'm saying is Elon Musk is a modern snake oil salesman and he's worshipped by the dumbest people on the planet. So there you go. Um, but if that wasn't bad enough, we now have found out that he has uh, declared uh, uh, using the power, uh, get, the, the power vested in him as the, uh, uh, the leadership of his companies which he owns, like I said, he didn't make the technology. He doesn't make the technology. He hires people to make the technology, uh, often abusing them, as we have seen with his in, in ongoing lawsuit in the state of California. Um, he has denied Ukraine access to Starlink satellites. Now, previously, uh, Starlink was uh, made available to Ukraine to uh, basically get imaging of their of their own land. So uh, he's got a million satellites that are circling around the globe right now, more than basically anybody else because he's a billionaire and he can do whatever the hell he wants. So he's got all these satellites going around and Ukraine was like, hey, can we have pictures from those satellites? If you're taking the pictures anyway, if you're taking the footage anyway, we sure would like to be able to uh, see what's going on in our territory and they've been able to use imaging from the Starlink satellites to basically defend themselves against Russia. That is, that is, until Elon Musk and a minister in Ukraine beefed on the internet. So 
it's no uh it's no surprise that Elon Musk is a right winger. He has uh you know voiced a lot of memeing in the direction of Donald Trump. You know, he said, ah, oh, Trump isn't that bad, all these sorts of things, that's not a big deal. But where it gets more extreme is in his extreme union busting, his uh, very, very, very weird opinions on gender, basically saying that gender has gone, gender ideology has gone too far. Uh, his uh, opinions on privatization of business. Um, all of these things indicate a pretty solid right wing bent. And of course, as the conflict in, uh, in Ukraine, which is happening because of Russian aggression, continues on, Elon has increasingly showed favorability towards Russia. And it has gotten to the point now where he had a personal meeting with Vladimir Putin. Vladimir Putin, the guy who is currently claiming that he wants to rebuild the Russian empire by annexing large portions of Ukraine and who is currently slaughtering many, many Ukrainian civilians. <laughs> um, does Starlink take pictures from orbit? Okay, here, I'll just read this. Here we go. Musk's SpaceX says it can no longer pay for critical satellite services in Ukraine, asks the Pentagon to pick up the tab. Since they first started arriving in Ukraine, the Starlink satellite internet terminals made by Elon Musk's SpaceX have been a vital source of communication for Ukraine's military. So you're right. Sorry, I, I apologize. I a small bit of, of miscommunication. His satellites don't do the imaging directly. His satellites provide connectivity for communication, for surveillance, for all those types of things. They don't actually take the pictures, just so that we're clear. Sorry, I'm not a space person, okay? I don't, I don't go to space. Um, anyway, uh, so far, roughly 20,000 Starlink satellite units have been donated to Ukraine, with Musk tweeting Friday, the operation has cost SpaceX $80 million and will exceed $100 million by the end of the year. But those charitable contributions could be coming to an end, as SpaceX has warned the Pentagon that it may stop funding the service in Ukraine unless the U.S. military kicks in tens of millions of dollars per month. Documents obtained by CNN show that last mu month, e Musk's SpaceX sent a letter to the Pentagon saying it can no longer continue to fund the Starlink service as it has. We have evidence the Ukrainians actually were paying for it. Very interesting statement from Elon Musk. Being Ukrainian actually in the topic of Starlinks, I want to tell you some based facts re-Starlinks, okay? I admire the actions of SpaceX enabling Starlink service in Ukraine. It's a true game changer, opens the fields to no cellular, long distances not suitable for radio given the situation is changing. So like you can see, this allows for surveillance, it allows for communication, allows for data to be transferred so that troop movements can be uh, coordinated. Despite that, I have not seen any Starlink which was bought by the government or by SpaceX. All the Starlinks I have seen or used were bought by volunteers like myself or soldiers put their personal money forward. The subscription price is also paid out of pocket. In my charity fund, I have, I have bought and delivered to the front lines over 50 Starlinks. Some of them are still being paid for from my credit card, now at $60 per month. One more Starlink that I bought and paid for, for Ukrainian EOD unit for Kharkiv Offensive. So, what we're now hearing is that no, this was not a charity effort. Elon Musk is once again talking out of his ass and interestingly, once again, talking out of his ass in a way that kills and hurts a lot of people. So Elon Musk isn't uh, isn't doing some sort of like, uh, you know, oh, I'm standing up and looking out for my own interests here. He's literally just siding with Russia. And uh, there's there's a there's a considerable amount of um, there's a considerable amount of back and forth on this. Um, it's just, it's just, it's just incredible. Like, look at this. Although Musk has received widespread acclaim thanks to responding to requests for Starlink service to Ukraine right as the war was starting, in reality, the vast majority of the 20,000 terminals have received full or partial funding from outside sources, including U.S. government, U.K. and Poland, uh, U.K. and Poland, according to the SpaceX letter. So even according to his own company's letter, it wasn't even, he's not, He's not giving them freely. They were already paid for. This greedy motherfucker just wants more money. 
And in truth, what he wants to do is he wants to make it easier for Russia to push into Ukraine because he knows that Russians, that Russia is struggling in the war in Ukraine. So we've, we've stopped in and talked about small, uh, small updates in the war, uh, in the, the war against Ukraine, which is being waged by Russia. Um, and, uh, it isn't going well for Russia. It's not going well at all. Russia has lost an unfathomable amount of troops, equipment, and, uh, now it's looking like they're losing a lot of ground that they gained early on. Um, wouldn't this be war profiteering definitionally? Yes, it would. Isn't that odd? Um, just keep in mind that this is not out of character for people like Elon Musk, but specifically for Elon Musk. Do you guys all remember when Elon Musk said that he wanted to coup Bolivia because a socialist leader won and it would make it harder for him to get lithium because there was a socialist in power, even though his company doesn't even, apparently doesn't even buy Bolivian lithium? Do you guys remember that? Yeah. Uh, uh, Elon Musk does this shit all the time, and it's a luxury he can do only because he's rich. That is the only reason that he has any say in anything. He's a rich guy who has technical ownership of the work of thousands and thousands of people. His decisions impact many lives, and the way that he handles these decisions is literally like an upset Redditor. If somebody disagrees with him, if a Ukrainian disagrees with him on the internet, he can be, he can use his executive power as a billionaire and as the head of these space companies to just say, well, we're gonna cut off your service then. We're gonna threaten to cut off your service then. We're gonna put your troops into a panic. We're gonna put your citizens into a panic for Reddit updutes. And it's really, it, it's really upsetting. It's really upsetting if you think about that, that we live in a world that is so fucked up that basically uh, we have one guy who can make these decisions. He can get grouchy one day and he can decide we're going to yoink the paid for services that are helping you defend your land from an invader. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about the fact that Russia is invading Ukraine and that Russia is b killing an incredible amount of civilians in this process and some uh, uh, Reddit soy lord wannabe inventor guy uh, who gets jerked off by tech bros all the time can just log on one day and say, nah, you know what? We're gonna pull your service. It's literally like old school royalty. And that's the, the state of the world that we're in. All the bloviating about, about, about uh, the world is a freer place, all the bloviating and at the end of the day, we still have modern royalty. Fuck Elon Musk. Simple as. Uh, there's not much else to say about it. Uh, Elon Musk is very clearly doing uh, uh, doing things to to gain points from Putin. I don't know if he thinks there's business opportunities in Russia or if it's just because of pure, uh, I want to get Reddit updates. I want the, the pro-Russian people on the right to, to like me more. Um, isn't infrastructure irrevocable? Like the fact that one dude can pull the plug on infrastructure is a problem, especially when his inf infrastructure occupies neutral territory. Like he's very likely in violation of international law. Yeah, and what's gonna happen? Who's gonna do anything about it? What are they gonna do to Elon Musk? You think they're gonna drag him in to be tried in the, ha in the Hague? No, he's untouchable at the moment. So yes, he can clog the sky up with his shitty satellites. He can literally monopolize the industry. He can sit on it for his own profit. And then when he feels like it, because somebody pissed him off on the internet, some random person in Ukraine, uh, some random Ukrainian government official who isn't even the only person in the Ukrainian government can piss him off so that he can then say, we're gonna pull service from you. That is... My favorite part of the whole Putin thing is that Musk was trying to portray his anti-Ukrainian stances as him being a free thinker, only for it to come out that he was typing verbatim what Putin, Putin asked him to. Of course he does. It's, it's, it's pettiness in the cost of human lives. How, how would you guys, you guys, do you guys realize this is like the fundamental, like, Sit, like the, the disgusting sickness 
of power that plagues humanity, right? The idea that for whatever reason, even if Elon Musk was the most accomplished guy and, and all of the things that he made up was absolutely true and wasn't just bullshit that he posts on the internet to seem like a cool guy because uh, he's sad his ex-wife left him, uh, even if all of those things were true, it would still be fucked up that one guy can have a bad day and make a make a decision that that will kill civilians, a lot of civilians, that will essentially black out the communication capabilities of a def of a military defending its own land. But there is one good piece of news. There is one good piece of news. Let me show you. Let me show you the good news because there is indeed good news. Tesla has lost more market cap in the last 30 days, 306 billion than any other company in world history over a 30 day period. Let me see if I can get that. Uh, let's see if we can get the Tesla stock. Can we take a look at the Tesla stock real quick? Boop. Just boop, dropping. Okay. All right. Oh, it's go. Oh no, it's going down. It's going down. Oh shit. Pew. Why though? I don't know. Probably because there's a lot of people who feel that it's inappropriate for him to be uh, doing this. There's probably a number of reasons for it. I mean, their market value is purely hype, but that's like most of the market. That's like you know. Can we see the market cap for Tesla just dropping? Look at this. This is it. This is the market cap specifically for Tesla. Okay. This is the chart for specifically the market cap. Ready? Here it was this morning. Psh. Let's take a look at it over the five days. Amazing. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Who knows if any of this shit matters? I do know that if his stock prices go down, he's going to have a hard time coughing up the cash to buy Twitter. Do you guys remember that? That's right. Uh, Elon Musk has basically gotten himself into a position where now he has to buy Twitter. Um, yeah. Yeah, we'll see. So... Yeah, he got the feds involved because he was memeing so epically. He was an epic memester. He was epically memeing by putting people's jobs and, and life and an entire industry and everybody who uses the products on the line for a joke. He was having fun. He was just memeing everybody. Do we want to look at what are the let's I wonder if we can see. Yeah, I know people have mentioned cryptos dropped really hard. Let's see if we can see the Bitcoin over the last like year. Yeah, look at look at how Bitcoin has dropped over the last year. It's dropped so much. It went from like 56,000 down to like literally less than half of its value. So, a lot of these grifter industries are uh, are having their they're they're having their moment. They're 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 clapping. They're 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 clapping themselves finally. Um Okay, sorry. This is totally unrelated to Elon Musk. I have something to do. Uh, Sock Dunleff says, how do you think Musk's cult-like following is so strong despite the repeated public failed pronouncements? Um, that's a really good question. Uh, the reason why, okay, so there's a couple of reasons for it. So, um, tech people are a, uh, a, a, they have a tech people have a large presence on the internet, okay? Uh, tech guys, people who work in tech, and when I say people who work in tech, I mean people who are in uh, positions for software engineering, people who are programmers for companies like Apple and Google, all of these jobs that are, you know, making pretty decent money, and their job spends a lot of time on the computer. Most of these jobs let them do things like Reddit. Reddit is full of tech bro people. And there is a certain type of magical thinking that is very common among tech people. Some of it is very a very innocent form of like hopefulness. And the other part of it is this sort of 
self-reinforcing sense of like self-importance. The idea that like, oh yeah, me working for YouTube, Google, Apple, whatever, uh, or Facebook, we're I'm I'm saving the world. I'm I'm doing something good, even though a lot of these jobs ultimately boil down to the real truth of these jobs is that they are making infrastructure for advertisements. A lot of people are sold this illusion and not to get like too psychological on this, but like um, if you've ever interviewed at all, like I, I, I almost went into tech. Uh, I had an offer on the table a couple of years ago from Microsoft uh, to do sales for a tech company. And let me tell you, the culture is the most, like they are the, it's the most egotistical culture ever. All of these companies are constantly buttering up the people that they're working with. They're constantly telling them how important they are, how you're gonna be a part of the change in the future. And so there's this idea that all these tech guys are the ones who are changing the world and who are gonna save the future uh, and who are gonna save us from all of the bad problems. Tech people don't not believe in climate change Tech people don't not believe in uh, poverty. A lot of them are some kind of like, uh, I don't know, social capitalist, I guess you could call them. But a lot of them basically believe that we are going to invent our way out of these problems. And so as a result, when you have a guy who is playing directly to that mentality, the idea that yes, I'm who you wish you could be. I'm a billionaire, I'm an inventor, I'm gonna save the world. Whether or not he's going to, it sells to that image. And so a lot of people, uh, a lot of people who are in this position of being buttered up by their companies, being buttered up constantly, giving them this self image that they are going to save the world by inventing the technology that will change everything. Um, they, they, that appeals to them. And so Elon Musk has this highly, highly online uh, 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 group of people who are very invested in that. And there's a second aspect of this. It's not just the, the, the distributed, I see this guy like me. Because remember, a lot of these people also have invested in Elon Musk's companies. So it's, it's a double whammy. You have people who see themselves in Elon Musk, who truly deeply want to believe that some hotshot billionaire inventor tech guy is going to be the guy that saves the world. And then they bought into it. They bought into it early. They used some of their, their fucking bonuses to invest in his businesses. And now they're on board too. And that's a really hard type of like, like, it's hard to overcome that level of investment and, and come to the conclusion that you were wrong. You know, it's the same reason why, like, why do you think there's so much hype around, uh, around crypto? The problems with crypto were not like invisible. They were not made up and they weren't just haters saying it. People were pointing out extremely obvious uh, material issues with crypto. And nonetheless, there is, gigantic cult-like followers who are like deeply, deeply invested in this. And it comes from the same place. It's people who are online all the time, people who are huffing their own fumes all the time saying, yeah, it's the tech guys who are gonna change the, we're gonna be the techno future. We're gonna be the, the, be, the, the, the AI and the spaceships and the Star Wars and the, and the, the Star Trek. That's us guys, that's us. But I couldn't be, you know, further from the truth, of course. Anyway, that's my answer. My answer for why he has such uh, a, my, my answer for why he's, uh, why he's got such a, a cult-like following is because he tells people he's the most blatant of all of these people. He tells them, yes, I will invent the magic solution to X problem. Yes, I will. And whether or not it's true, he's able to dress it up enough that it appeals to a lot of that type of person. And as it turns out, that type of person is also the type of person who tends to have a really big Reddit account or a really big Twitter account or a really big YouTube account. I mean, how many, um, how many tech channels have like just basically patted Elon Musk on the back? You guys, if you guys want to go watch even like skeptical channels, even channels that are generally known for like applying skepticism to tech solutions, they lose it over Elon Musk because he, he plays directly into their biases.
And it's not that technology isn't important. Technology is important. Um, but a lot of people simply, they want to believe that there's going to be an easy answer. And that, and for them, the mythology that they've bought into. And keep in mind, by the way, um, Elon Musk is only like the avatar of this. Because there were many before him. From the mythology around Bill Gates, the mythology around um, around Steve Jobs, the mythology around uh, fuck even like actual scientists who like Albert Einstein, who then are like I don't know blown up into this like godlike proportion of where they're like some kind of like hotshot inventor who saved the world when in reality they were just extremely devoted to certain types of science. Yeah, Neil deGrasse Tyson. I mean, there's a bunch of this. There's a bunch of this sort of like techno jerk off. Um, yeah, Nikola Tesla is literally treated like a wizard. They act like he's a wizard. It's ridiculous. So, you know, there's a whole bunch that plays into it. And th that was a long way of me saying that Elon Musk taps into that better than anybody else. That's his one thing that he's really good at. He's really good at convincing other tech nerds that he's the real deal, that he's the new uh, savior tech guy. It is very Christian, I will say. Even though a lot of these people would consider themselves atheists, it's very Christian to look for like a uh, a magical, um, you know, like a, like a magical guy. I mean, but also if you listen to the way that people talk about climate change, the same groups of people, the types of people who are really hyped about Elon Musk and his inventions, like they're, 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 they'll say that like, oh yeah, Tesla is, is going to help us, you know, change the world and help us fight climate change. When then you actually look at the facts and Tesla, while electric cars are great, these are electric luxury cars. They're luxury cars that the average person, the people who are driving, you know, uh, clunkers that cough up a bunch of gas, they can't buy those. And the cost to make a Tesla in the first place has a huge carbon footprint. They want to believe that there's a magic sponge that will be able to suck up all the carbon in the atmosphere. They want to believe that they won't have to make any changes, that they won't have to look at the world becoming a worse place. They need to believe that there's a savior out there who's going to come up with an invention that's way smarter than anything that they could have thought of. And in that way, it becomes magical thinking. It's something that really annoys me. It's part of the reason why I have been so mad. I, I've, you guys know for two and a half years I've made fun of Elon Musk. And, and believe it or not, even back in the old days, I was I, I used to roast people for being a fan of Elon Musk because he came off as such a salesman to me. And he is.